Welcome to the third and final part of a three-part series using Bollinger Bands. Before we get started with this video, we have to put our disclaimer up. And the idea behind the disclaimer is just to let you know that the video is designed to be an educational video. And any of the signals I'll be showing to you are strictly for demonstration purposes only. This first chart we're looking at here is a daily chart of Walmart. The indicator at the top of the window is the Bollinger Band indicator that we created in the second video and the Bollinger Bands are then plotted directly on top of the prices. The indicator again is helping to determine the shrinking or the contracting of the Bollinger Bands for a certain number of periods of time. Every time this indicator is plotting a value of 1, it's saying that the bands have been constricting for the last five periods. And the bigger that the top is up here at the top, the longer that those bands have been constricting. So for example, like right here, it looks like it only happened one time, but here it happened over quite a number of different days. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create an expert advisor that's going to color code the price bars that's going to coincide with this indicator. So to get started, let's open up our expert advisor. I'll click on the new button over here on the right hand side and we'll give our new expert a name. So for, in this case, let's go ahead and call it, for example, like an exclamation point, we'll call it Bollinger Band Expert System. Now, to color code the price bars, the part of the expert advisor we're going to work with is called the highlights. And we're going to create one highlight to identify when these bands are constricting. So to get started, I'll click on the new button over here on the right hand side and we'll give this a name. And let's call it our Bollinger Band Squeeze. Because what's happening here are the Bollinger Bands are squeezing together. And to identify that, I'll color code the price bars to be green in color. So then, for the formula that I'm going to put inside the condition box, to save us some work, what I'll do is I'll just grab the formula that we created before for this indicator. So for the time being, I'll go ahead and close down this expert advisor by clicking on OK and save our work. And I'll close this dialog down. And then I'll open up the indicator by double clicking on it, go into the formula tab, and I'll just make a copy of the formula that we created before. I'll go ahead and go back into our expert advisor and underneath our highlights I'll find our Bollinger Band squeeze formula. I'll click on the edit button and then underneath the condition box I'll go ahead and paste that formula in. Now what this is going to do is that when this indicator is giving us a positive or a answer of yes or true it's going to color code those price bars in this case to be green. So let's see what that looks like. We'll click on OK, click on OK, and then we need to attach the expert to our chart by clicking on the attach button and closing down this dialog. Now if you look real close you'll see the price bars have changed color but to help see it a little bit better let's go ahead and change the colors of these black price bars to maybe a gray. So I'll go ahead and select the price bars and then down here at the bottom I'll click on the gray and then also I'll go ahead and fatten up those price bars as well. So to do that, again, I'll click on the price bars, and down here next to the color palette, I'll just select a little bit heavier line, and that way we can see those colors a little bit better. So wherever we're inside our chart here where the price bars are green in color, you'll note that the indicator is showing us a positive value of 1. Next, let's go ahead and get some buy and sell signals here in our chart. There's a lot of different ways that we can define what a buy or sell signal should be. But for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify a buy signal of when the closing price of the security closes above the upper Bollinger Band. And a sell signal will be when the closing price of the security closes below the lower Bollinger Band. So again, let's go back into our expert advisor. I'll go ahead and edit the expert that we've already created. This time I'm going to go to the Symbols tab up here and we're going to create two different symbols. We're going to create one for the Buy Signal and one for the Sell Signal. So over here on the right hand side I'll click on New. We'll give it a name. We'll call this first one our Buy Signal. And for the condition we're going to identify when the closing price is crossing up above that upper Bollinger Band. Now the formula that we're going to use for this is what's called the Cross Function cross function is a very handy function. If you're not familiar with it, definitely take some time to learn how it works. But how it works very quickly is it's written as cross, open parentheses, and then data array number one, comma, and then data array number two. And the way that this operates is that if you want, for example, the closing price of the security to be crossing up above the upper Bollinger Band, 
will replace data rate number one with the word close and then data rate number two will replace it with the value of the upper Bollinger Band. So how do we write the formula for the upper Bollinger Band? If you're not sure where to begin, a great place to get started is just click on this functions button down here to open up the formula language uh, library here. And inside here you can just kind of scroll down to the different formulas here. They're all listed alphabetically. And the Bollinger Bands of course down here will be underneath this section. Again, it's a pretty big list, but the one we're looking for right here is called the Bollinger Band Top. So I'll select that and down here at the bottom make sure that you've got a check mark in both of these boxes and I'll click on OK. And you'll see that it'll paste it right in here for us. Now what we need to do is it's given us a hint on what it needs for the formula. And for the data array, I'll go ahead and replace that with the word close. For the periods, I'll replace that with however many periods we want to use, which in this case is going to be 20. And then for the type of Bollinger Band, we're going to leave the letter S, which is an abbreviation for simple. And then for the type or however many standard deviations, we're going to replace that with the number two. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove some of the spaces just so we can see it a little bit clearer. But our formula should read cross, close, comma, Bollinger Band top, close, comma, 20, comma, S, comma, two. What this is telling us is this is going to help identify when that closing price is crossing up above that upper Bollinger Band. Now to identify what that's going to look like, I'll click on the graphic tab up here at the top and underneath this graphic drop down I can choose for example like a buy arrow I can choose the size of it I'll make the color of it to be green and then what I want or the way that I want to plot this arrow is I want this arrow to be plotted below the price plot so we'll click on OK and that'll give us our signal for the buy signal there now to do the same thing for the sell side, we need to identify where the closing price is crossing down below the lower Bollinger Band. So to write that formula, again, I'll click on the New button. We'll call this our sell signal. And the condition, in this case, is also going to be the cross function, but this time we're going to put the Bollinger Band bottom first. So to identify what that formula is, again, I'll go to my Functions Library. I'll go down to the B's here. I'll scroll way down here and find the, oops, I always go a little bit past it, but we'll go to the Bollinger Band bottom here. I'll go ahead and select that and click on OK. That'll paste it in. Again, we'll replace data array with the word close. The periods is going to be 20. The type of Bollinger Band calculation is going to be a simple calculation. And then for the standard deviations, we're going to use two. All right, let me get rid of these uh, spaces here. There we go. There we go. That's a little bit better. So it should read Bollinger Band bottom, close comma 20 comma S comma 2, and then following that will be a comma and then the word close. What this is going to now identify is when the closing price is crossing down below that bottom Bollinger Band. And to identify what this is going to look like, I'll click on the graphic tab. And underneath the graphic drop down, I'll choose a downward pointing cell arrow. And this time I'll make this one red. But this time I want this arrow to be plotted above the price plot. So we'll click on OK. And to see what it looks like, we'll click on OK. And then close down these dialogs, and that'll give us our buy and sell signals there on our chart. Now by taking a look at this chart here, what we're looking at here is that when the price bars actually change color, we know that the price bands have been constricting for five periods or more. And with a sell arrow, we know that the price closed down below that lower Bollinger Band. And then for a buy signal, what we're looking for is we're looking for those price bands to constrict. And again, that's identified by the green colored price bars. And we got a buy signal because the closing price closed up above that upper Bollinger Band. Now what's nice about this, once you've created an indicator like this, this is going to be used on any time frame that you want. Now if you have the real-time version of Metastock, you can look at intraday data. So for example, down here in the lower right-hand corner, I'll click on the D button, and I'll change this to, for example, like to a five-minute chart. Now we have that exact same information, but it's being applied to a five-minute time frame instead of a daily chart. And the same indicators, the same studies can, of course, be applied to higher time frames. So, for example, let's go ahead and change it to a weekly chart instead of the five-minute chart, and we can see what that looks like. 
The nice thing about the higher time frames, for example, like on a weekly chart, is that when the prices break and if those prices continue to move in that same direction, some of these price moves can be pretty big. So let's go ahead and take a look at Apple, for example. So I'll go ahead and enter in that symbol. So on this weekly chart here of Apple, you can see that there are a number of good buying opportunities on the way up. And it also looks like you've had some good selling opportunities there on the downside. Let's take a look at a daily chart of Apple and see how this applies. So I'll go ahead and swap this over to daily. So let's go back here in the chart here just a little bit. And let's take a closer look at some of these moves. When analyzing any type of trading strategy, you always have to consider two things. Number one is money management and then number two where you're going to be getting out of the trade and without those two things I would highly recommend that you don't trade until you have those both worked out now to identify where you might get out of a trade using for example like a breakout strategy here using Bollinger Bands let's just say hypothetically that you're looking to buy and use this as a breakout system the bands have been constricting you get a price breakout to the upside where you're going to get out of the trade well, there's a number of different types of stops that you can use, but a real quick one that you could use using this exact same indicator is maybe you could use this middle line as a possible stop. And this middle line is actually just a 20 period simple moving average of the prices. So if the prices move in your favor, that moving average will also move up and theoretically stop you out at a better price. And then vice versa to the downside, if you're looking to trade a downside breakout, you're waiting for the prices to actually break down below that lower Bollinger Band, and your stop might again be that moving average. So if the prices violate that moving average, that's where you'd get out. And if the prices continue to move in your favor, this would stop you out at a better price. But the nice thing about going through and creating a strategy like this and plotting the expert advisor and making sure it's giving you the correct buy and sell signals you could then take these formulas and you could back test them inside the system tester. And then when you're happy with that, you could take the same formulas, plug them into the Explorer, have it go out and search for your buying and selling opportunities. So there's a lot of different ways you could use this information. So if you'd like to learn more about Bollinger Bands, I definitely recommend that you go up and check out his website up at BollingerBands.com and maybe also take a look at his book called Bollinger on Bollinger Bands. So I hope that this has been helpful, and for more Metastock training, please visit our website at learnmetastock.com.